Hey everyone, it's uh, Brett and Jason. Here we, we're at uh, Nostalgia Alley and we're talking about the disc resurfacer today. Dun dun dun. Dun 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 dun. The disc resurfacing, how does it actually work? What, what process does it go through to create a disc? Think I'm a genius or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm no genius either, so I guess well, we can just the guess. machine knows what it's doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we just put a Wikipedia article right here <laughs> and then they can just read how it exactly. works, yeah. But uh, but I, I, I hear like it, it takes off like a layer of plastic basically. At the, Essentially what it the does disc. is when you get a disc that's really scratched, like like Super Monkey Ball this here. This one's pretty scratched. Banana Blitz is messy. Yeah. Super Monkey Ball, Banana Blitz. <laughs> this is gnarly. Um, what happens is the machine will essentially use, I mean, for lack of better words, like a type of sandpaper, but it's a pad. And this pad is amazing at what it does because mm -hmm. it will very finely uh, take off a small layer of the disc. Um, that is scratched, nice. which allows the laser to now read the game so it is now playable again. So the scratches are obstructing the di uh, the laser from reading the disc properly. Exactly. So. So, so the information isn't on like the, the very top layer of the disc, it's somewhere behind around there. It's probably. in the middle of the disc. It's actually. in the middle, okay. So one thing yeah. that most people don't know is that they think uh, the information's on the bottom, but the bottom is just a protective coating. Oh, okay. And so is this top layer right here. Mm -hmm. And in the middle sandwich in between that is where the actual information is. Is. That makes sense. So yeah, we have this one that's super gnarly. We're gonna test to see what it looks like. Uh, right now, you can see it looks pretty scratched up. Look it at that it's gnarly. It's pretty scratched uh, up. That's, it's beat that's, the... that's beat to Sam Hell and back. It's, it looks like it looks like got in a fist fight with like a Donkey Kong or something. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna, we're gonna run this through the machine. We'll see the process of the machine. And yeah, there we go. Machine, oh, it takes the energy out of us. Yes. But check it out. Would you like to do the honors and percent? Check this out. Wow, look at how shiny that is. And we'll do it side by side. Look at, look at before. Had a lot of scratches. Uh, I don't. There's no way in hell that we could have. Uh, the we could have read this disc. It's yeah, just it's, it's done so. Bad. But now it's uh, playable. So that's pretty cool. And uh, so, so well, not even just playable but playable for someone to actually play and enjoy. Yeah. So not just like, oh, I can put it on my shelf and it's- Yes, <laughs> yeah. Someone is gonna buy this game and actually be able to play and enjoy it. Now, yeah. Which is why the disc resurfacer is amazing. Yeah, uh, some frequently asked uh, question is, can't I just use sandpaper that I get from the store to clean it? <laughs> and that is a real question. That is a real question. I'm not even joking. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, real fine. You no, know, you cannot use real fine sandpaper on this. It is. Uh, it's a, it's a pretty delicate process that the machine is way smarter than us humans and yeah. there's a lot less uh, room for error with machines. They know so us. much, these machines. Yes, <laughs> they are geniuses. They're geniuses. And then another thing is people say, why don't you just use toothpaste and like rub it in and fill in the cracks? Because that is not a real thing that you should be doing. That, doesn't, that doesn't work. <laughs> but the, the sandpaper, someone did take sandpaper to a disc. I think it was Mario Galaxy, if Ooh. I'm not mistaken. I, I'll have to double check on that. Yeah. But um, I believe it was Mario Galaxy for the Wii. Uh, it was absolutely horrendous. The Wii system would not read it. Uh, three minutes of my machine, it was brand new. Bam. Again. And so that's amazing. Uh, and then the one last thing I was gonna mention about the disc uh, cleaning surface. Uh, process basically it has different settings for different uh, severity of scratches. Basically, yeah. so there's different settings depending on what the type of disc and the type of setting, uh, type of severity of the scratch yeah. as well. So if it's like being like this one, we'll put it on a deep setting. Uh, some of them they'll only need a medium or a light or a very light. Sometimes, yeah. especially on Blu-ray discs, you'll get blue uh, fingerprints. Yes. And if there's fingerprints on there, then uh, you just put it on a clean polished setting. It doesn't take anything off of the. Uh, the disc itself, it just cleans it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's much easier than using like a microfiber cloth because it has the fluids to do it correctly. As with like the Blu-rays and all that, uh, when, when you get them all out, uh, since those can't go on a higher setting, that's like, that's the solution to get those ones clean, unfortunately. Yeah, so unfortunately with Blu-ray is they're made out of a different type of disc, so they're different than CDs and DVDs. Uh, so Blu-ray, you can't actually get scratches out, but they're also really hard to scratch. So if you scratch one, good job, because <laughs> You were trying to scratch yeah, it. Trying to scratch yeah, it you were trying to prove a point because yeah. there was the early commercials, like the Disney Blu-rays, they'd be like, scratch resistant. So that that's basically a challenge to any kid with free time. Challenge like, resistant. All right, scratch resistant. Yeah, I assume like it would be like Majin Buu, like you scratch it and like, 
regenerates, <laughs> and it's just like it th- like if you like try to kill it with a knife, it throws it back at you. Yeah, like exactly. nice try, jerk. I'm Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's awesome, and I, I'm glad we could kind of uh, debunk some of the myth about this. Yeah. And I, I, I feel like it, it's necessary in order to play a lot of games because otherwise you just have a, a scratch of game that's unreadable. So yeah. you gotta scratch. I, and like there's there's people too, and I, I'm on some of the Facebook groups or forums and whatever, and people are like oh, I won't buy a, a disc that has uh, been resurfaced. Nah. And I can guarantee you that if you are you if the person who resurfaced the disc used one of the machines like mine, uh, then it w- you will not be able to tell. You absolutely cannot tell uh, if someone uses a GFJ machine or God forbid a disc doctor. Is that what they're called? Disc doctors, yeah. yeah. They would sell them at like Best Buys back yeah. in the day. They're like, oh, your blue wings are messed up, or your DVDs are messed up. Try this thing. Yeah. <laughs> and if they use one of those, you will absolutely be able to tell them those things are garbage. And then you take that same disc, you put it in my machine, it'll look brand new. Um, and you won't be able to tell. And so I've had collectors come through here, um, like really hardcore purist collectors who are like, ah, you ruined the integrity of that game. And I'm like, okay, cool. One of these discs has been resurfaced and one of them hasn't. Tell me which one. And they, yeah. they cannot tell me. It's, it's you so, can. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyways, thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all. Perfect. Bye, guys. See ya.